And gentlemen, this is our last session. It is a great pleasure to, for the first time, tackle an interesting subject, sports. Sports, a different world. Social action, business approach, a new experience we'd like to have because sports are an extremely important human activity professionally and as factors fostering social changes. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this round table organized by the Spanish Olympic Committee. Mr. Sanchez, you have the floor, sir. Good afternoon. We're going to talk about sports and social actions. And <coughs> it is very important we're going to start now to my Maria Calvo. Maria Calvo is CEO from Asoca, Spain. Asoca is a worldwide um, company looking for social entrepreneurs with a strong will to change the world. Asoca was an autochthonous um, leader and um, this is the name they've taken to uh, change the world. How about Asoka? Would you describe what your activities are? Thank you. Well, Asoka is the first world organization of a global social entrepreneur community. We think a social committed person ought to implement new ideas in order to foster social changes to solve problems. We've been working for almost 30 years and uh, people have the possibility of making big changes, but uh, people need support to implement ideas. We've started organizing a worldwide uh, association to give a backup to people and to put them in contact with other people having the same ideas at other sites of the world. When we talk about sports, we all know that sports will have a clear-cut impact that goes far beyond health care, that goes far beyond well-being. We know uh, sports will um, enhance the capacity of working as a team. But I'd like to say that it is not only teamwork, but big changes. We're talking about big changes worldwide, thanks to sports. To understand what I want to say with big changes, I'd like to describe the way we work. We go deeply into the roots of the problems. We're not going to solve consequences or to palliate signs or symptoms. We go for the causes, the roots, into the roots of lack of justice. And we look for a solution. They use sports many times as a tool to modify the system that is triggering problems. One example is the following. Arabic countries, they have a corporation, Nike and Ashoka, working together to foster big social changes, given empowerment to people, to women. And in our, uh, these countries, women at sports uh, is changing the way women uh, see themselves, their role within a society that enhances self-esteem. Through the program, we are teaching them uh, about leadership capacities and uh, we're making this possible. Uh, societies are um, given uh, acknowledgement to the importance of women with projects, 2,500 women working together, 80% of them um, described this experience as a possibility of growing, uh, improving potential capacities. And on an equal footing, for the first time, they go out and play. And there is 
accepted by society. 92% of girls say their parents are accepting this and changes uh, welcomed. So uh, sports are not superficial. It's a life-saving activity. It's a pathway towards equality, reinsertion, and uh, against uh, being deprived from rights. Would you give examples about Spain, what you do here in Spain, for instance, Asoka? Well, most of our entrepreneurs are using sports as tools. Sara Diestro's story, uh, she lived in Spain last year. She comes from Peru. Uh, Peru streets are full of youngsters, homeless. They have no social support, but uh, they are at risk of drug trafficking, committing criminal offenses, and uh, um, those uh, youngsters adore football, and there was an agreement with the local football club allowing them to participate at the juniors league, or not only the team, uh, because for them was uh, the uh, a dream. They had to go back to school, and uh, there are some volunteer workers uh, giving them catch-up or recovery courses. And uh, so uh, sports are attracting them, but uh, they learn about nutrition, dietary intake, habits, and so on and so forth. Almudena, well-known, uh, as you know, uh, she uh, got a... Uh, Olympic medals and Almudena, what would you like to tell us? I'd like to know, uh, well, in your activity, gymnastics, uh, that has changed uh, different uh, social uh, stereotypes. I think that according to my experience, I started as a child and uh, I thought uh, there were always only young girls uh, uh, and finishing a career at 20 years of age. At 20 years of age, I wanted to keep on with competition and I had empowerment and strong will to compete. I started trying to uh, participate at my third Olympic Games. That was unusual and that was not accepted in generally, was not generally accepted. I don't want to say it's only here but when I took a taxi, they were saying, but you're still at 20 years of age, practicing gymnastics, so old, it's 20 years of age. And then I realized I wanted to go on. I wanted to go forward because I know physically I could do it. And I uh, did cope with this challenge. I said, I want to uh, be uh, um, a woman within uh, sports for uh, young girls. You know how to cope with this. You want how to convey what you've done. And, and achieved, there were problems, handicaps, but uh, motivation was there. And uh, I had participated at my fourth Olympic Games. A token of recognition was given by public opinion. I was the first uh, athlete competing for four times at Olympic Games. And uh, now there are uh, women competing at 24 years of age. So a grown-up person can be at the highest level competing and showing arts because it's more than sports. And I think there is a social recognition of uh, um, women's participation at sports. The positive results, yes, this is a sport. I've always recommended uh, the practice of sports. It's not only um, the fact of enhancing teamwork and um, we have the possibility after Olympic Games I had to had an operation uh, and uh, uh, I said I had a bad knee, I had, been oper uh, had, I had an operation on my uh, patella, the knee, and those were uh, girls um, suffering from Down syndrome. They started and they were just throwing a ball at uh, themselves, and I was close to them, and I said, oh, well, um, what a pity that uh, they couldn't uh, catch the ball. And they said, no, no, at the beginning they couldn't even walk. And now they are playing sports and they are 
catching the ball. So they were uh, given thanks to their coach because they had improved, because they had enhanced capacities thanks to sports. Alejandro Blanco needs no introduction, president of the Spanish Olympic Committee. Um, he is an outstanding uh, judo athlete. I'd like Alejandro to uh, describe how international Olympic sports can change things, the way things happen. Good morning to you all. I think it is a very interesting question. I'm going to summarize this. And uh, I think that to give you an idea of our country, um, sports are uh, the fact of integration in our country. And uh, I think uh, that that's a way of a uh, change in society. We see people like Almudena, wonderful um, sports person. We have Ana Torres as a coach. We have the elite of sports, but uh, sport and practice of sport um, is more important. We have 285 athletes at Olympic sports and we have 14 million people practicing sports in Spain. So we have to take into consideration that the practice of sports enhances good values. We'll have to teach at school uh, those values to our children, the importance of values, not only for competition. It is not the fact of winning a competition, but working together, efforts, investing time and efforts. And one day, you're not as good as you would like to be, but in the end, that's like a student who's been studying for a long time, and then you fail at a test you fail, you're getting ready for life um, and learning through errors. And competition is a second step. Athletes uh, should understand that, uh, of course, they are able to succeed, but you'll have to digest succe success and also failure. And not everything is sports. There is a life out there on top of competition, and that life is longer when you also, uh, there is a, li a long life ahead. And if you're able to do this in the end, you're educating people and you're trying to get a better society, peaceful society with uh, justice and social integration. And I think this is the strength of sports. Now we are living, perhaps, or oh, without any doubts, the best uh, period of uh, sports in Spain from a situation where we had uh, rare cases uh, outstanding people uh, working alone and now we have big clubs good federations and now we are participating at all sports our sport men are among the best worldwide and uh, um, 95 95 uh, percent of uh, what's broadcasted as a very big event is a sport uh, match. We have here 12 million people watching competitions. They wear Spanish t-shirts. I think there is a strong movement. People have this acknowledgement of being Spanish throughout the practice of sports. Citizenship uh, is uh, acknowledged through the practice of sports. And internationally, how do you see it? Is it positive? Do we have positive impacts? Um, how about Olympic Games? Well, no doubts. Uh, you have an extraordinary country, which is our country, Spain, one country, Spain. Ambassadors might be, uh, well, politicians or uh, sportmen. And I'm not talking about uh, my youth, when Spain was known thanks to Real Madrid. Our uh, people are ambassadors. You practice sports, you become ambassador. At the Olympic Games, five billion people were watching the games, and out of 205 countries, the ambassador uh, was Rafael Nadal. That was number one ambassador. Uh, successful um, athletes, and when they take the floor, they uh, enhance the prestige of our country, Spain. Spain acknowledged worldwide as a wonderful country because uh, we are represented by our athletes. Athletes are our best ambassadors because they show uh, hard work, a lot of success, and Spain is playing a very important role. 
and working very hard, Fernando Sanchez Lázaro, president of Negocio Group, a group publisher, uh, uh, entrepreneur. Don Fernando, uh, tell us the way you see business as a um, key factor. Well, the world of uh, sports as business, along the last 15 years, we've seen this role has been enhanced. We are at an economic crisis, but uh, fundamentally there is a crisis of <coughs> values out there, lack of values out there. Now, 2016, Olympic Games will be organized in Brazil, but you see the importance of the World Cup in Brazil and now the Olympic Games. It's like uh, a locomotor. Uh, we've seen that Brazil, people are going to invest there uh, foreign investment, there's uh, now the key issue. When you look at a big Olympic Games, when you look at a World Cup, Football Cup, that's extremely profitable for the city, for the country organizing the Games. But even though you are not getting the um, games organized at your site. I think it is important to give it a try to organize Alejandro Blanco's played a key role. Madrid uh, now is uh, better known. I think that there will be benefits, a benefit because of the brand of Madrid that's been conveyed, sold worldwide. It uh, it's very difficult to, to develop a brand. Positioning is fundamental. When we talk about sports as business, I will structure this into two different levels. First of all, big Olympic Games and uh, what can be uh, create this awareness and an important growth that happened in Barcelona along the Olympic Games back in 92. And then what happens for companies? Uh, putting aside football games and big events and thousands of millions there, I think that's profitable and I think that sports people are acknowledging this because they know uh, to a certain extent uh, the way to get sponsors, to get big companies uh, backing them up and uh, uh, helping uh, uh, sports clubs. But I think that we should work together hard. There are other athletes, there are small and medium-sized companies that can sponsor, that can contribute also to foster sports. It is not the same. We're not talking about elite athletes. They practice the same sports, but they are not perhaps at the big leagues or at the highest level. But the important thing is to give it a try. It's the effort. It's the competition. In the end, they, uh, I think, are comparable to the effort uh, a politician can uh, make to become a public person. I think that athletes are ambassadors and uh, there are athletes who cannot perhaps take the business class um, uh, when they uh, fly, but um, we need a token of recognition to uh, that structure, not the highest uh, elite athletes, but all athletes and uh, there is room for improvement, and I agree with what has been said. Sports are changing a country or uh, structures or approaches. 15, 18 years ago, it was different. There were, I don't know, some um, places to practice sports in Madrid. Now we have a network that's 100 times bigger of, uh, for practicing sports. And then, but there are small and medium-sized companies uh, that should also participate, and also advertisement. And let's be aware of the fact that politicians, for instance, and now there is a lack of union in, um, well, within the two big political parties. And when they get together, well, is when they talk about sports. During the Olympic Games, they were giving them big hugs over one to another, and they were having common goals. So. Olympic Games as a goal. So that's a way of uniting people and it's also a very profitable business. Uh, well, needless to ask another question because you had answered already Ana Tarres. Ana, uh, it's uh, the key person 
for Olympic uh, swimming and uh, creating beauty at figure swimming. Very prestigious athlete, very wonderful coach in the field of swimming. Anna, you create beauty and uh, describe your personal experience. Would Anna describe the importance? Would you, Anna, describe the importance and what you've done? Today, when they told me, <clears throat> let us see what we can contribute in these uh, talks, I said, well, I believe that the most important thing is experience and how we have passed from, as Emilio said before we came in, from a sport that nobody knew about. What was this kind of uh, aquatic synchronized swimming? They jump into the pool and this was a sport that nobody knew about. And uh, it has turned into something which is in the media. And two things that are extremely important are that at one first uh, moment we have to <coughs> have a team. Without a team, this would have been impossible. And this teamwork, we have updated it and by giving the uh, people this uh, work, this job. And we have seen that if the place where we are working, and Cap de San Cugat, well, the success in this case of synchronized swimming has been to be able to uh, manage to associate these things. And uh, this is something that has uh, given the uh, swimmers the possibility of dedicating themselves to sports without having to think of what they're going to do and without having to consider that they are a dual uh, personality because, as Almudena said, the best age in a woman for sports such as ours is when the uh, swimmer has her maximum personal maturity. And with 25 or 30, you know very well, you know perfectly well what you're going to do. And you don't have to think of your professional future because when you leave your sports, if you don't have anything to fall back upon, if you have not been able to train in other fields, or it is true that all the programs we have, more and more so for sports people, they can enter within what we are calling tutors, sports, and uh, universities where they can begin and continue their studies with more or less regularity. And it has been these two things along with, I always say the same thing, along with a great deal of work. I believe that we have set an example of work and patience with hard work and trying to excel and to improve in our day-to-day -day work and knowing that little by little we have been sowing the seeds that afterwards have given rise to flowers. And, for example, next year we will be a group that will repeat and, uh, these ad and uh, we are delighted because they had never had so much influence in the middle classes knowing that a group such as ours, a group of girls, could do this. And they were choosing celebrities, and when they go to the premieres and they introduce you, then they are proud that people from Spain can represent a, a Spanish brand. And this is something that makes us feel very proud. And in its day, it was something very special for us. And now it has become a reference. Thank you. Manuel Navarro Valdivieso from the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria was in his day Director General for Sports in the Canary Islands. And I would like, Manuel, for you to tell us a little bit which are the relationships between sports and university in our country. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to share this panel with you. And uh, I didn't have the program of the 
campus of excellence from the general coordinator until the very last moment but as i said i'm very happy to be able to share with you from my own viewpoint of having gone not only through my present function as re responsible for the university but also a national um, coach and uh, I have selected uh, sports people and in the 30 odd years i have been working for uh, in the city of sports i have been in all the different organizational links from the sports person themselves to the political management and what i would now like is to enter into answering your question about the connections or relations with the university obviously the present spanish legislation incorporates sports as a right for students and it forms part of integral education of students and at least uh, from the legislative viewpoint we have taken a small step but the reality of sports in the university is not brilliant uh, you have to be a sports person at the university and you have to be educated in that philosophy of life of quality of these values we are discussing here and the university should make compatible for students all that dedication which competition sports require but i do not wish to focus only on uh, competition sports uh, sports as a value as culture as a form of living and uh, uh, that is where i believe we have to make all efforts unfortunately sports are not being too widely practiced in the university in spain and this is something growing in the uh, childhood ages it was normally interrupted during baccalaureate and for most of them physical education disappears as, as a subject and this is a value that they must recover later in the university and it is difficult unless there is continuity in the practice of physical exercise it is difficult to create these very healthy habits for the future so the university in fact i believe still has a great deal to do and to contribute to students in infrastructure in means and, and technical means and we have to all of us be pushing in favor of these interests and that sports may become a vehicle for social cohesion between all students. For example, in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, an experience we had is that sports are being the main uh, attraction, along with the climate perhaps, for many European and African students to come to the Canary Islands to contribute their, uh, to continue their studies. And they require sports as an element that will justify their university studies. I believe that the potential for sports we all know about economic, social, educational. What we have to attempt is to offer infrastructure and uh, technical means so that this will be so. And there the university in the last few years, and I believe is leading a, an important European project which we are setting in the market many technicians that uh, are working with or using sports among those that have graduated in the science of sports, the um, physical education, teachers, and many other professionals. And I believe that the university is training good professionals. The only thing is that I believe that as yet society has not incorporated them within the system. They continue being volunteers, and volunteers are very useful and necessary in uh, the university. But when we are speaking about uh, technical aspects, we need people who are as best prepared as can be. And I think that there the educational institutions are betting on having good professionals. But it is society now that has to open itself so that all these technicians will be contracted. So that social change is not only upon this basis of those professionals 
Uh, who, and of the, the others who collaborate with them. I believe that this is the future that the university has ahead of it, more than simply limiting other projections, such as, for example, comparisons with American universities. I believe that the Spanish model is what it is, and we have to try for the university to contribute technicians to society and that the sports people who practice competition sports will have the greatest possibilities in order to continue with the sports task. Thank you very much. And finally, Emilio Butragueño, a former a, a football player of Real Madrid called El Buitre, and he is really something that we uh, uh, should uh, uh, imitate as a sports person. He has defended the value of sports. I would like to know how you harmonize in the world of soccer, basically, where there is so much media intensity and entrepreneurial, and they're under so much pressure. This is a very high competitive sport. How you? How can you associate this with the values that sports people should have? Good afternoon, everybody. I had taken down some notes after the very interesting presentations that have taken place before me. And I believe that we should divide sports into two categories, social sports, the sports of regular citizens, and there, I believe, Spanish society has progressed greatly. Spanish society 30 years ago compared with uh, what it is today in its awareness of sports and the benefits that sports give to human beings, I think we have progressed in a very satisfactory fashion. Sports help us to relate to others. There are much better facilities right now than there used to be. If, uh, we were aware that we had to invest in sports and then, apart from that, there is professional sports, pro sports. This is a window in which to showcase values to society. And uh, as uh, they were saying, that uh, you become international ambassadors of Spain, and you have to represent very pure values that benefit the country. An enormous impact upon the GDP. Soccer, as far as I know, every weekend generates a great deal of money for this country. I have the experience. I went to a small team, to a not very well-known city in Mexico called Celaya. And I have to say that when they got in touch with me, I have very good friends in Mexico. And I called one of them on the phone, and I asked him, how is Celaya? And he answered, what is that? So he didn't even know whether that was a brand of milk or, or, or a village or what. Well, that city, thanks to its soccer team, it had the chance that year of reaching the finals. And it absorbed or received every weekend when we played on Saturday evenings many people from the surrounding area, from other places that were about 80 kilometers away approximately. And it generated a great deal of money for hotels, restaurants, a great deal of economic activity thanks to the local soccer team. So this is another important aspect of sports. And concerning values, there is no doubt that Fernando said before that we are at a moment when we are undergoing a crisis of values. I believe that sports represent the purest values of human beings. Naturally, Almudena is a very clear example. And uh, there, these were athletes that trained about seven, eight hours a day. That the next day they were not on the front uh, pages of uh, glossy magazines, as may happen with our soccer players. So there was a personal commitment with the, uh, striving to be better and showing yourself that tomorrow could be better. Well, this is applicable to anything else. I wish that my children had this const this idea of being constant. And uh, uh, I believe that their sports play a role in society because our more popular sports persons are really an example for society, and in particularly for youth. 
how they behave, what they say is going to have an influence upon my boy who's 14 years old. And his idol is Raul, so whatever Raul says or how he behaves is going to influence the personality of my son. And this is the way things are, so this is a responsibility that they should always bear in mind, the great professionals. But at the same time, it is a marvelous opportunity to influence upon social change, upon this recovery of values. I am of those who think that in life you may be successful being a good person. and. Uh, with uh, a series of uh, values, a certain set of values, you can be popular, you can be wealthy, and these are the values in our society when we evaluate people, but uh, these are really passing labels. I believe that the most important thing is to attempt to know yourself well to choose those values that you have learned from other people, because after all, in life, you meet people along the way. And if you're a little intelligent, you're going to try to learn from them. This is your duty every day, to try to learn from everyone with whom you relate. Because there is some point in which they surpass you. If you want to improve the girls from uh, figure uh, swimming or gymnastics, uh, and well, every day you ha they have to keep their eyes open in order to try to advance. So it is true that sports is uh, great because it can transmit a series of values. You never give up. You have to respect your rival and your colleague and the decision of the coach. You have to admit defeat. You have to admit that you also can win, and you have to know how to you have to know how to win and how to lose, and it is not easy to relate with others. And you should be able to profit from the qualities of your colleagues in order to be better and be aware that you win if the team wins, if the team loses, you lose. So this solidarity, this humbleness, should be present in sports, and it should be present in human beings in general, in society. In a society that, if it wishes to continue growing, it would be very good that it uh, took into account all the values of sports. After the uh, different interventions, perhaps you'd like to elaborate on some statements? No, I think it's fine. Perhaps uh, we should start now. I think it's a better idea to start with the Q&A session. I think it's wonderful. Uh, I think that that reflects a reality of sports and the meaning of sports. Almudena, what do you think? Almudena? Well, it is true that in my last Olympic Games they have had a social influence because when I was uh, walking down the street, somebody walked up to me and he said, well, I cried with your last Olympic Games. And it is curious because I've had more job offers for advertising or more sponsors or brands interested in me afterwards than during. So it is something when I stop to think about it, I think, well, that your work be in the media is something that has a great influence, but now I am not competing, I'm doing other things. But they request me for things that when I was in act, uh, active in sports, I couldn't do because I couldn't attend. So people have valued greatly that when I was 28, I managed to uh, 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 compete in a sport for girls. And it had this uh, positive repercussion. And for me, as an individual, <clears throat> this is... Uh, something that I was um, mentioning. The first thing is your personal satisfaction, and afterwards you have contributed very positive things for the girls who are beginning to play sports. Well, we left this, but you are a publisher, and how do you see the relationships between the press and, and, and sports, soccer and other sports? I think it is very important relationships with the media. Nowadays, I think that all newspapers uh, are important, but Lasso, Marca are number two. Number three, I think, 
uh, in Spain. Number one is El País uh, newspaper. I think that all newspapers tackle the subject of sports. Sports are everywhere. And the question I'd ask is, it is like uh, the opposite situation, the other way around. Sports are uh, present everywhere, good business, social, it's an asset. And uh, you can consider different steps. You can consider elite athletes, professional athletes, and uh, just people practicing sports. And I'll ask the state, is the state investing enough money backing up sports at universities, schools? Are they creating the infrastructures required? Well, 20 years ago, we didn't have the high-speed train nor the uh, big uh, road infrastructure. I don't know about money, but uh, I think that the practice of sports requires money and investments, and the current government and governments-to-be should uh, improve sports infrastructure. You were talking about universities. You know it better than I do, and I think it is fundamental to have a button-up approach and then from that button you have then better athletes when you improve the infrastructure. It's not only up to the government, but uh, big companies, small and medium-sized companies helping athletes, uh, best known athletes and uh, less known athletes. But all of them require that. They all make great efforts, an athlete to get training and everything perhaps uh, five, six, seven hours a day, well, uh, it's are required. And then the athlete uh, should be able to make a living uh, uh, during a lifetime out of what the person had done long, uh, four or five years of a career. And I am not talking about Spain, I am talking generally speaking. I think they're not uh, paid justly, and um, I think that uh, they make great efforts and um, training long four or five hours and working afterwards, and they are humble people, poor people that uh, practice sports. I think uh, we should give a thought to it. We, society, we should make an effort because as the president said before, uh, athletes are ambassadors wherever they go. This is why I think that uh, the better we treat them, the uh, better uh, acknowledgement we'll get worldwide. Yes, regarding the media, uh, well, journalism and sports, we need each other. We need badly uh, good relationships. Sports are what they are, thanks to the media, mostly, and uh, communication companies and um, the media in general. They have a great opportunity, thanks to sports. Marca, for instance, is, a, a, is an important uh, it's a newspaper, and out of 20 uh, emissions broadcasted, and I'm talking about the top. Uh, uh, 14 out of 20 at the top were uh, football or soccer uh, games. It's very important, and a match is fundamental. Uh, some uh, radio programs, uh, uh, well, every uh, evening, and it's difficult to explain, but at 12 p.m., there are lots of people listening to the radio because they are uh, talking about sports. And I think that we need each other. We uh, have grown together, and now we have an industry, thanks to sports, with a huge impact. And not only socially, but financially, big business, big money. Yes, Anna, I'd like to say something. I'd like to th say that it is important. There is a massive coverage of sports, but not all sorts of sports. We have football, we have soccer, we have uh, um, male athletes, and then we have a pending subject there, uh, some minority sports and 
uh, the practice of sports in the case of women are to be given acknowledgement. You will agree with me, this is not my case because whenever we win, we are at the front page, but sometimes we had to pay uh, for uh, getting it published and uh, or advertised. Uh, well, when we have women's sports, uh, I think uh, women's sports are not uh, in, uh, considered as, as interesting. Almudena, you've said that you don't know why is it so that you have a success now afterwards and not during the practice of sports. I can answer to that because you are just uh, quitting. Um, high competition sports when you are at the very high level, the highest level, and that you become like a reference. You've been participating at four uh, Olympic Games, fighting against adversity, and uh, I think that uh, you didn't get all the sponsors you wanted. It is not like um, uh, football or soccer. I think that women at uh, the highest uh, level uh, should continue practicing sports and that's what you've uh, proven I mean well what I want to say is that I've realized that during uh, Olympic Games back in 2004 that was writing a page uh, the book of history and I think that uh, it is difficult to uh, get where we were and I think we did our best uh, because I tried to convey to the media not what they knew that was tough, we were training long eight hours, no. I was trying to talk about other items that might be attractive for people. But what's complicated is that I knew I should elaborate on that, that was like uh, uh, going on for the fourth Olympic Games. And it is not, uh, I couldn't get uh, the medal, but it was the fact of participating. I understand what you've said, I share that, because I've tried to analyze what has happened to me at the end of my career. But I think that um, relationships with media were uh, such that I tried them to talk about our sports. There was an interview where I tried to uh, talk uh, uh, openly 21 year career it was a long career and long 90 seconds i was about to give up my uh, career and that was broadcasted prior to the olympic games and people saying i was crying and then media are extremely important for sports like uh, what we do where we have good results uh, well uh, are important but if they're not winning any medals. Those uh, putting aside everything, family, uh, everything, that's our choice. But that means you're representing your country, you're working long 21 years. And uh, it was thanks to that interview I became known or it was broadcasted afterwards. If not, people wouldn't have known about it. And no, to all sports, people have the capacity of telling the story of what uh, sports uh, do represent for them. It's more than training, it's communication skills. And uh, I think about it and I say, well, perhaps all sport uh, people, all athletes should tell their story, uh, how difficult this is and to share values with people. I don't know, I was thinking about it. Maria Calvo, yes, I wanted to talk about visibility, positioning and visibility. Alejandro, you were talking about uh, uh, well, the share, and that is important. Sometimes it becomes trivial. Sometimes we communicate on uh, the market aspects, and uh, we do not communicate about uh, social values, sports uh, as uh, uh, triggering social transformations. Uh, Mudena mentioned uh, uh, Down syndrome girls practicing gymnastics, that's not conveyed enough. I think that there is a part of society out there who are lacking opportunities, perhaps gender differences, religion differences, and sports might transform their world. But we'll have to render this visible, if not participation will remain small. 
Perhaps you would like to elaborate on that, Manuel? Well, you were talking about universities. Yes, I think that uh, infrastructures are important. In Spain, long the last 30 years, we have enhanced our capacities. We have progressed. The phenomenon Barcelona to uh, 1992, I mean, was a driven force for other uh, countries or cities. And uh, quantitative and qualitative changes are here to stay, but we're far away from uh, fulfilling our needs. We need many more facilities. What's not clear is that if this is up to public administration, should they pay for the infrastructure? I think that we should look for uh, an understanding. Civil society, on the one hand, managing uh, sports and uh, public support to enhance uh, the amount of facilities we have, we'll need to get along because public resources are out of our uh, taxpayers. It's, uh, well, our money. And if this is a right for all, of course, society understands this. And we need a proper space for practicing sports. There is room for improvement. I think that universities, now they have the capacity. There is the um, autonomous uh, approach, and I think infrastructures are going down at universities because you have a decision-making capacity, but you don't have money, so you cannot give priorities because you have the necessity of staying alive and training technicians. So uh, sports are considered as uh, the uh, well least of all our problems, and. Uh, uh, we're talking about the need of investing. Perhaps it is much better to have a healthy lifestyle, practicing sports, because this will enhance effectiveness and efficacy, better management, better results, better outcome. Uh, they will learn more at school. Universities will be better if our students would practice more sports. We lack infrastructure, but I think uh, uh, civil society, entrepreneurs, business people should have a word to say. They should intervene in a coordinated way with public administration and we should reach a joint agreement, promoters working together, investing money uh, to enhance infrastructure and then to have uh, public control or management but with uh, uh, private investments public and private partnership, this is where we have to go along the next few years. And the, um, at the current situation where we are at a crisis and the administration cannot cope with unemployment and with the scar scarcity of resources, better infrastructures, but coordinated with private and public sectors. Mr. President, would you like to comment on that? Well, just... First question on sports. I think we should think aloud this country prior to Barcelona 92 and afterwards. How is it so that that was a starting point? Prior Barcelona 1992, Spain was a disaster. There were some results, some people were successful, some exceptional athletes with outstanding capacities. A gift of God, that was it. But then you have, for instance, Manolo Santana, when he explained the way he was trained, that was a miracle. And then Barcelona, 92. And then companies started investing. Government started to invest. And we've seen results, 22 medals, 13 gold medals. Before, only six, sometimes one some other times no medals. But that was not the turning point. The turning point was that society understood the importance of sports, what was not normal. I mean, uh, people were uh, just practicing sports and then society started practicing sports, uh, running, uh, swimming, and politicians afterwards followed what society was requiring. Societies were demanding infrastructures all over 
uh, villages, countries where infrastructure developments, but small towns were asking for sports uh, facilities. Nowadays, our country is a different country. Sports everywhere. You go to, you see people jogging, uh, practicing. You see people. Uh, I remember in Valladolid, prior to Barcelona, there were only uh, three sport centers. Now we have 30 centers, 6,000 users. And then society understands the importance of sports. And this is a way to assess it. When we uh, go for results, we see countries where you have lots of medals, but of course, when we uh, go uh, visiting, we go from the hotel to the center and you see people are not practicing sports, they are not uh, jogging, they are not running, something happens. The country is uh, focused on sports when we people, we practice sports every day, everywhere. Now facilities, I'm not sure that we lack facilities. I think that what you've said is important, and we are on the right track from a private family-owned uh, center where the person signed uh, long 20 years uh, in order to create uh, his or her own uh, center. Now we have public investments, private and the triple P, so uh, the town hall offers uh, just the land and then uh, private companies do invest and they create centers. We need uh, technical skills and we are on the right track. I think that we are uh, saying that uh, we have here two elite athletes here, three elite athletes, but we have wonderful, we have well, experts and a coach here, Anna, as a coach, is the best worldwide. And that's what we have to do. Go for it. Get the best uh, people. Share skills with other people. This is teamwork. And then go for the best. Go for it now. Get results. And uh, you have to mobilize society. That's the future. That's where we have to go. We're on the right track. That's good for Spain. Thank you, Mr. President. And now we're going to open the Q&A session. Perhaps the participants would like to ask questions. And uh, our first question goes to Mr. Emilio Butragueño. Isn't it true that sports will also divide people? Isn't it true that there could be negative impacts due to that division, splitting up opinions or people? Sports should never, ever divide people in general. Never. My world, soccer, football, I think that two countries might have different interests. We have very good relationships now among different football clubs. And I remember uh, when I started back in 84, we were there four or five years where there were some hooligans and uh, that was a reality at that time. And I remember that going to the stadium sometimes was difficult. There were hooligans and now I go uh, to a match. I go there and uh, I think it's a wonderful place for us to enjoy. The situation is much better now, practicing sports Rivalry, well, that might happen, some hooligans might exist, but that's human nature, lack of respect, perhaps lack of tolerance, that's possible, but, but well, how should we, with this uh, uh, World Cup and uh, European Cup back in June was amazing. People were there, people were packing up, all of us, and there was a great uh, party everywhere and uh, how many of us, so I prefer to keep this image, not the image of violent minorities, that's not good, and they do not respect that other people were better or had different uh, ideas, so I think that 
sports uh, foster tolerance and uh, have uh, and offer many advantages. Almudena, Ana, what can we do to improve sport uh, knowledge on sports? I would say that uh, the media should uh, pack up uh, sports and uh, I think this commitment is necessary and I think that citizens uh, should also get the information. They know about the sport when it is published. Sometimes uh, people have opinions without knowledge. If we had a page every day uh, and uh, perhaps you don't start reading the front page, but perhaps this will teach people about sports or perhaps a time uh, uh, TV programs. I'm not going to say the situation is good. good. I'm not going to complain. I always think that we'll be able to do it, we'll be able to change the world to a certain, certain extent and I think that we're able to be proactive. So I'll say if they don't come to see us, go there and talk to them. And that's my personal experience and we are at a moment where the social fabric is quite strong and people open doors and I think that uh, they are ready to help. So many times uh, I've uh, knocked at the door at uh, 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 well, uh, Spanish TV program and they say, well, if I have time, I'll publish this. It's the other part. I think we've uh, knocked at the right door and uh, I've uh, always uh, been kind to the press. We're talking about Olympic Games back in 2000 when we had the first uh, duo at uh, the final uh, round of Olympic Games. That month I was uh, paying attention to what was published by the press that was fundamental in the end advertisement and what we've published is very important. I share those values according to my experience I had days well every day I was training and then at noon uh, during my the peak of my career I was just giving interviews to the press because long 15 days they are interested in what we do I remember I had that concern I, I, I was just giving interviews to the media because that was our moment but that was once out of four years, and I wish it were every year, every time. Manuel, how about the administrative platform existing uh, at universities for competition? Do you organize uh, competitions to coordinate whatsoever? Universities have their own internal competitions at different sports. Universities uh, organize activities and then on top of this we have the university campus competition that's organized uh, with uh, the help of Spanish federations. We try to have a championship with a high level and that's important for university sports. But on top of this there are other international competitions and you have the uh, well, competition structure already there, but we could have a debate on that. Is it profitable? Um, that type of competition, I mean about the yield, not about money. Coordinating this with uh, Spanish uh, committees because uh, an athlete uh, has, uh, uh, well, to participate at whatever competition is open and uh, we'll have to organize the timetable for athletes and we'll have to on the one hand understand high competition high level competition representing a country at an international level and that's different from promotion of university sports and there is where we should uh, focus our efforts uh, it is not uh, the Spanish Federation model that ought to be um, copied. Uh, it's not the mere image of that that we need. University sports and competitions should promote university activities. I'm not saying that's a second level competition. I am not saying uh, for not uh, good enough athletes, 
but for those who want to communicate through sports, who want to have social actions, who want to interact with other people, focusing on values, not on high-level sports, but enhancing competition as a way of developing uh, teamwork capacities and making it uh, attractive for university students. What do you think about introducing, like in other countries, uh, sports as a, a part of the um, matters, uh, you know, uh, yes, as a, a matter part of the program, uh, study program, we have the curriculum at the university. Well, now with Bologna, uh, sports are um, put aside, uh, they are not included into the curriculum, and I'd like to say that university students should have uh, six European credits absolute values, 25 hours per credit, that means short while, but uh, there are guidelines uh, for university students to practice and be able to practice sports, but that's not compulsory. It's uh, an option you have, it depends on opportunities given and uh, the time you have for doing that, there are no uh, infrastructures or lack of proper infrastructures. If all university students wanted to practice sports jointly, universities wouldn't absorb that workload. Universities do not have the infrastructure, not the staff, to comply with European recommendations. Uh, I think an effort ought to be made. That's the pathway. That's uh, what we'll have to do. And that's in the short term what we'll try to solve, given them the right to practice sports, a right and a duty practicing sports at the university. Maria, how to cooperate in a field of Ahsoka, how to do it? Well, in order to collaborate in Ahsoka, there are multiple opportunities. You have to identify initiatives, new initiatives, different initiatives that are focusing on social problems through sport or other tools. Uh, to collaborating with volunteers hand in hand with some of the entrepreneurs in the web asoka.es if you want to see which are these opportunities. And finally, present here. It says that the promotion and sponsoring of sports has increased, that a great deal of importance is granted to it. But in the neighborhoods, there's being and almost a destruction, a closing down of sports facilities, and the prices have increased to not very popular levels. So the question is, how can we promote the practice of sports and have adequate facilities? Well, I believe that this is positive criticism because at any rate this doesn't happen elsewhere, but if in your neighborhood it happens, that is the, the problem for the individuals. All the experiences I have, I think that the municipal facilities, and I visited many throughout Spain, and from all kinds of cities and villages are all right. Perhaps I would uh, be more critical in the staffing, in the technical staffing, that in the facilities themselves, it is a question of having the technicians that make all this work. So frequently this has not been a correct thing, but I think this should be improved and all facilities should be adequate for the people who are there. So we should have something that is clean, that has all the necessary means to be used, and to fulfill the, the service for which it has been designed. But if we now covered uh, in a bus most of the facilities in Madrid, a very high percentage, and just to speak about Madrid, and really model facilities, and when some facilities do not fulfill this, uh, we should uh, denounce it. Do you consider that there are some legal measures that could be taken in order to improve this further? Well, I think that before they said about doing something in the private universities, I think that the state should grant uh, greater importance to this. And something very important the president said is that there have been many town halls, and these have been really numerous in the time of uh, Bonanza, where 
the facilities are really obsolete with regard to the number of inhabitants or the sports practice there. So the maintenance of all those facilities for any mm, town hall is very complicated. And I don't know exactly whether the Secretary of State for Sports should influence this. And we should repeat again that when you do this, you have the central government, the local communities, the uh, municipalities, and when you build a pavilion, I suppose it is only the mayor of the town that has to uh, participate. But there should be a greater coordination in all these kind of infrastructures that are built. I do not know whether it exists, but I estimate it doesn't. Well, thank you very much to all those present. Sports as a business, as, as a means for social change.